Section 11.1, .1, video three. So let's look at an example. For what values of R is the sequence R to the N convergent? So at first glance, you might think, obviously this is never convergent. But remember, it's the N value that can only be positive integers. R is not defined here to be anything specific, which means it must be allowed to be anything. So the solution, we know that the limit of a to the x equals infinity as x approaches infinity whenever a is bigger than one. Again, that's just our logical knowledge of how raising something to an exponent works. If the base is bigger than one, it's going to grow and it's going to grow out of control. Thus, the limit is infinity. And then if your base a is between zero and one, the limit is zero because when you raise something smaller than one to a power, it gets even smaller. So these sequences, or this function rather, would get closer and closer to zero as x approaches infinity. So if we replace a in both of those limits with r, then we would have r to the n like we want up top. So we would know that limit of r to the n is infinity if r is greater than one and zero if r is between zero and one using the same exact information from above. Now what happens when r is one and r is zero? Because that's not defined here. These are strictly greater than and strictly less than. So if r is one, this would be the limit of one to the n. And one to the anything is simply itself. Therefore, the limit of one to the n is just one, which is convergent. And when the base would be zero, then you would have zero to the n power and zero to the anything is also itself, which is zero. So the limit of zero to the n is zero. So both of these values would be convergent because they're not infinity or undefined. Now, what about negative numbers? If r is between zero and negative one, then the absolute value of r is between zero and one, and we already know from the previous slide that that limit is zero. So using that theorem from the last video where the limit of the absolute value is the same as without the absolute value, we would have those limits being the same. So the limit of r to the n is still zero when r is between negative one and zero, just like it is when r is between zero and one. And then if r is less than or equal to negative one, r to the n diverges. Because just like when r is positive, you have a large, negative value getting even bigger as n approaches infinity. So this slide shows us various values of r and what that graph would look like. So in this first one, what is r? It doesn't say anywhere, but I think r would be negative one. Yes, I'm sorry. The case r equals negative one is shown in figure eight. So negative one to a power simply bounces back and forth between negative one and positive one, because one to a power is itself, and the negative with it just changes the sign back and forth between negative and positive. In this next one, we have a few different graphs where r is greater than one. Of course, it grows and grows and grows. You've seen exponential functions before. If r equals one, it stays exactly the same right at the value one. And if r is between zero and one, it gets closer and closer and closer to zero, as n approaches infinity. And then this last graph is trying to show the same idea, but when r is negative, so the flip of all of these. So to put all of that information together, we have that the limit of r to the n is zero when r is between negative one and one, and one if r equals one. And this is where this limit or this sequence is convergent. Everywhere else not listed here, we found that the sequence is divergent. Okay, um, a new definition, which is all very logical, so don't worry. A sequence is called increasing if every single term of the sequence is larger than the previous term. So the way they write that is a sub n is less than a sub n plus one. So if you have terms one, two, three, and four, this is saying four is bigger than three, three is bigger than two, and then the second term is bigger than the first term. So as you go from left to right, or as you're increasing from n equals one to infinity, the terms consecutively get larger and larger and larger. As long as that's true, we say the sequence is increasing. 
And if the exact opposite is true, we say the sequence is decreasing. If it is sequent, it, I'm sorry, if it is increasing or decreasing, we call it monotonic. Um, what does that mean? That means it only goes up or it only goes down. If it bounces around and you can't fall into either of these categories of increasing or decreasing, um, then we don't have a word for that quite yet. But monotonic is the ge generic term for either one of these. It strictly grows or it strictly decreases. Okay, uh, more definitions. A sequence is bounded above if there is a number m such that every single term is less than that value, less than or equal to that value. And the opposite is if it's bounded below, you have lowercase m where every single term of the sequence is larger than that value. If it's bounded both above and below, then we simply say it's bounded. If you can't say it's true for both of them, you have to specify. But if it is true for both, you can simply say bounded. Um, an example, a sub n equals n is bounded below because every single value in this sequence is one or greater, but there is no upper bound because this grows to infinity. Um, another example, n over n plus one that we've looked at a couple times, is bounded both above and below because the values are always in between zero and one. So zero could be considered a lower bound and one could be considered an upper bound. Um, something sort of interesting is that not every bounded sequence is convergent. And an example of that would be negative one to the n. Remember this bounces back and forth between negative one and positive one. So it's bounded quite clearly between negative one and one but it never converges to a value. It's constantly going back and forth between negative one and one, and thus that sequence is divergent. Um, also, not every monotonic sequence is convergent. Remember, monotonic means either increasing or decreasing. Um, however, what the last line says here is kind of cool. If a sequence is bounded and monotonic, then it has to be convergent. So bounded means bounded above and bounded below, and monotonic means increasing or decreasing. So if you can control or contain, I should say, your sequence in between an upper bound and a lower bound, and it's strictly growing or strictly decreasing, then it must converge to some value L or some limit L. Okay, so here's sort of a picture of that. Um, let's see, we have a sequence that is growing, but is bounded above by L, right? It's strictly increasing, so it's monotonic, and it's bounded above by L and below by zero, for example, and thus it must be convergent. All right. And that is the end of the lecture video three and the end of section 11.1.